All right, folks, Remote ID is here, and I know you have a lot of questions. The first one might be, what happens if you have an older drone? What happens if you build your own drone? When do you need to have a module, and how many of these modules are you gonna need? How do you verify that the module is actually transmitting? And then lastly, what module should you buy? So we're here to answer those questions and more. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the modules that are out there. Now we found nine of them. There's nine Remote ID modules that we put to the test. But wait, before we get into this, remember that you only need to have a module if your drone is not currently Remote ID compliant. Where do you have to check? You're gonna go down to this link right here and you're gonna filter by RID, Remote ID. This will tell you if your drone is compliant. If it is listed in there, you don't need to have one of these modules unless you have an older drone. Now, all of these modules we are about to discuss are FA approved at this time. For recreational operators, you only need to have one module. This will work for all of your recreationally registered drones. You can swap it in between the flights and ensure that your either Mavic Pro or your Fomi is compliant. For part 107, you will need to have a module for every single drone that is currently not compliant. So each of these modules will need to be registered for the aircraft registration number in the FA drone zone. So let's get started and let's take a look at first the approved standalone broadcast modules. These look very much like this. They have an internal battery. They can be turned on or off using a button or a switch on the side. And these are very useful if you don't want to wire anything up or if you have an older consumer drone. Now for our test, these are pretty much straight out of the box. There is no settings that were changed in here, just like you would if you just bought it and went for your first flight. First up in this category is the DB120 from Blue Mark, which believe it or not, is the cheapest in the category at <clears throat> $140. Right, it weights about 24 grams, uses Bluetooth and we, uh, WLAN, and it runs for three hours. It looks like, well, this thing right here, which is kind of bulky if you ask me. Uh, it uses a USB C charger in the back and is turned on or off using a red switch on the side. Next to the switch is the charging status, and when you turn it on, the DB120 shows the battery percentage on one side using four different lights, and on the other side, you can see the status light next to the configuration switch. Now for usage here in the US, there is no configuration required. You'll be able to see the serial number from the DB120 label that is at the bottom of the module. Now let's address the question that many of you are going to be asking of all these modules is how far away can you detect this thing? And utilizing our BV loss waiver, we actually went to test five different apps on Android, on Apple, and we even used a UAS Sentry receiver to see if it made a difference. Now this module's longest range that we were able to capture was 2,935 feet, so short of 3,000 feet with the Air Sentinel app on Android. Now we'll talk about more about the performance of the apps towards the end of the video. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Pierce Aerospace, which comes in at a whopping $264. Yes, I know that's uh, that's quite steep right there. Now it weights 30 grams and it uses 2.4 gigahertz. Now, I'm not sure if it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, actually they didn't say on the website. It's got a six hour of run time. Now the B1 operates using an on and off switch that is located in the back. It charges using USB-C and it has a status light on top of it. Now the B1 comes with a laminated reference card that's going to show the status light uh, explanation and then also the serial number. This is by far the furthest that we were able to pick up a remote ID of all the testing. It went up to 5,000 feet using the drone scanner app on Android. Uh, quite impressive actually, as far as performance is concerned. Continuing with the next module, we have the drone tag mini. Uh, which uh, they should have called a Mini SE because it costs as much as a DJI Mini SE at $327. That's right, I'm gonna say that again. $327, which is quite insane. Now, uh, we're gonna take off here, get out of the way. There you go. All right, let's get out of the way. And this drone right here uses Bluetooth and it is actually one of the heaviest, uh, 32 grams. It's going to operate for eight to 14 hours. This has micro USB charging along with the Mavlink support and then also LT compatibility. Now the mini serial number is on the side of the module, it has a button that you can use to turn it on. And then if you click once, you'll see the battery indication, a long press to turn on the device on or off. And then in addition to all this, once it's on, you can actually do a short press on it and it's got this thing that does 
does the tracking feature, which is pretty cool. So uh, you'll be able to go back and see your flights from the app. Now, if you're using one of these drones, you already have that, but it's a cool additional features. I guess for the price, well, you need to have that many features to uh, justify it. Now, in our testing, the drone tag mini range was, uh, well, only 1,640 feet using the drone ID app. That's the furthest that we were able to pick it up. Now, I'm going to bring this thing back and then we're going to move on to the final module, which is going to be the drone tag beacon. This little thing right here is smaller and cheaper than the mini and it also cuts out many of the features that well the average pilot is not going to be using the beacon is still pretty expensive at 229 dollars it uses bluetooth it runs 6 to 18 hours of battery and it weights 16 grams now like the mini the beacon has both the flight controller extension port and the bluetooth antenna extension and it can be charged using a micro usb connector now the power is turned on by using a button on the side right here it's an on and off with a long press if you do the short press just like the other one you will be turning on the tracking function now we tested this one and we were really surprised only 341 feet using the drone scanner app this is the furthest that we were able to pick it up if you really don't want to be detected <laughs> i hate to say it but this is your module right here all right, well, this wraps up the standalone module category. Next up, we're going to be talking about the add-on modules. These are the modules that require power in order to operate, but they contain everything else. GPS, broadcast system, etc. that is needed to be compliant. Now, this is best for all the folks that are flying foamies or maybe FPV, and they just want a plug and play solution in order to be compliant. Now, unfortunately, because of the lack of availability of parts, we were not able to test the range on all four of these modules. The first one in the category is the Bluemark DB121. Now, this module requires power in the form of a 5 to 14 volt DC, that's 2S to 3S. Now, the module cost is $119. That's right, these modules are a lot cheaper than the ones we saw in the previous category. Uh, it uses Bluetooth and WLAN. It weights 11 grams only, pretty lightweight. Now, similar to the DB120, the module has a configuration button and a status light that's going to show that the module is operating correctly. Now, next up is the flight test. Test, Easy ID, which is currently priced at $109. It weights 10 grams, uses Bluetooth. The module can be powered with 7.4 to 30.4 volt, which is 2S to 8S, and it comes without a case. Now, it can be purchased with or without the connector. Now, this module connects to the Flight Test app, which is available on Android and Apple, and is going to provide additional functionalities such as Find My Drone, a logbook, and flight tracking functionalities. Now, let's move on to the next one, which is the Drone Tag B. Yes, and yes, that means exactly what you think it means. It's an ultralight module, which comes in at $89. That's the cheapest in the category. It only weights 1.5 grams and it uses Bluetooth. Now the BS can take 3.3 volt to 17 volt DC. That's 1S to 4S and it has a very tiny footprint. Now, last up in this category is the Spectrum Sky ID. Now this is a brand new one. This module comes with Bluetooth technology that transmits the remote ID message and it comes at 14 grams. Now the input voltage is between 3.3 and 9 volt, which is 1S to 2S. Now the Sky ID is compatible with existing Spectrum receivers and it comes with four different cables to power it. And then last up, we have the most complicated remote ID module of all of them. Now this is as far as hooking it up. Uh, this is the Drone Tag DRI. Now the DRI doesn't really come up with internal GPS, so you are required to use an external one in order to operate it. Now the DRI can be operated in two different ways. You can use it as the UART pass-through if you want to use it as a module system and then you can also use it as a standard remote ID even though at this stage there is really no way to send the position of the controller into that message so it's kind of questionable if it's a standard remote ID now I recommend that you take a look at the documentation for this one because well it's pretty complex we hooked it up to our Octozilla and the range was well less than 50 feet so not so good. At just 1.5 grams and $55, if you build autopilot drones that use Ardu Pilot, well, this could be a good choice for you. Now, setup can be a little bit painful, even for those that have a lot of experience with Ardu Pilot. Now, you might be wondering which app was better at detecting drones. Well, we tested six different methods. The drone tag and the drone scanner app, those are available on iPhone. The drone scanner, the Air Sentinel, and the open drone ID apps are available on Android. And then we added on top of this a UAS Sentry receiver, which is a standalone device that's really designed in order to verify that your drone 
is compliant. It's not really supposed to be picking stuff from a very far distance. They actually have another device that will do that that's a bit more expensive. Now the drone scanner app, both on Android and on iPhone, consistently detected longer ranges. Uh, the Air Sentinel app on Android only was a close second to the drone scanner app. And then the Open Drone ID app on Android was a third, very similar to the same results we got on the Sentry unit. Now the drone tag app on the iPhone was, well, the most inconsistent, I would say. And then it even failed to pick up the Pierce Aerospace module and the drone tag mini, which was picked up by the other app, which is very surprising because it's made by the same manufacturer. All right, here's a final table comparison so you can see everything in one place. Now you'll find the modules in the order in which we tested them with the endurance, the weight, the size, the cost, and then the type all in one place. Now you can download a PDF version that we're gonna put down in the description below so it's nice and easy to read. Now we hope that this helps you make an informed decision at this stage about which of these you should get. Now a big thank you to all the manufacturers that sent us their units. Uh, we had to buy some of them. Some of them were uh, given to us. Now hopefully this helps you make a decision. Let us know which one you're gonna pick for yourself.